Hi, and welcome to uh, part two of uh, Cure Your Mind course. Now we're going to talk about your digestive system, how your, how your digestive system and the foods that you eat affect your mind and your mood. So to begin with, let's look at your intestines over here. So you have your stomach and your small intestine and large intestine. And your intestine is made up of a nice lining here, made of many, many little cells kept together by tight junctions. Now, what happens is food goes in your intestines and over here. And on this side, there's blood vessels that um, absorb the foods and nutrients through these cells. On this side, within your intestine, you, ha you have uh, lots of little nice bacteria, bad bacteria, a lot of chemicals and also serotonin, which is um, a neurotransmitter which prevents depression. A lot of serotonin is also produced in your intestines. So this environment here has to be kept really healthy. And if there's too many bad bacteria and not enough good bacteria, this lining here gets damaged. And when this lining gets damaged, you get holes in your intestines and that allows toxins to leak into your bloodstream and create inflammation throughout your body. So let's look at the next slide and see how it all comes together. So what damages your intestines? Basically eating a lot of junk food, inflammatory foods such as wheat, dairy, too much coffee, too much sugar, too much alcohol, um, even the birth control pill and other medications will kill off the good bacteria in your intestines and then bad bacteria will grow when bad bacteria grow of course they damage this lining here and you can see with these arrows that um, you have toxins leaking into your bloodstream and when that happens of course you'll get chronic inflammation throughout your body uh, which will affect your neurotransmitters your brain chemicals as well as your hormones and therefore affecting your mood So let's go through these point by point. Toxins and poorly digested food particles, when they enter your bloodstream, they will create chronic inflammation throughout your body. And that will affect your brain chemicals as well as your hormones. And uh, the other thing that happens when you have a damaged intestine, your digestion will be less. When your digestion is less, it means that you're not going to absorb as many nutrients as you can and therefore you'll make less neurotransmitters in your body less hormones less brain chemicals and therefore your mood will be affected as well and as we saw before a lot of serotonin is produced in your intestines so a damaged intestine from a poor diet and too many medications too much alcohol and too much coffee um, will mean that you'll produce less serotonin over time now Remember the, um, the leaky gut syndrome? Basically, when you have holes in your intestines, you have food particles that go into your bloodstream and toxins that go into your bloodstream. That creates inflammation throughout your body. Now, your body produces cortisol from your adrenal glands to manage inflammation. If there's too much inflammation, then your body has to produce way too much cortisol and this is produced by your adrenal system and your adrenal glands are already tired from chronic stress which we'll talk about later so inflammation actually makes your adrenal glands even more tired and you end up having a cortisol imbalance in your blood and that also suppresses your neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, GABA and melatonin so you can see a direct correlation between inflammation and leaky gut syndrome and adrenal fatigue which therefore affects your mood and causes anxiety and depression. Uh, the toxins from leaky gut syndrome also affect your organs such as your liver, your pancreas, your thyroid, your adrenal glands and all of these organs are related to your emotions of course and we'll see how in the next video. So. How do we go about and repair your intestines? The first thing, of course, 
is to remove inflammatory foods yeah so the typical foods are wheat dairy coffee sugar alcohol and beef and more and more people are getting sensitive to soy corn and eggs now you can do a food allergy test from a lab near you and get a doctor's prescription for that to see if there's any other foods that you might be sensitive to I've often seen some of the results from these lab tests not so accurate because they say that the person is not sensitive to lactose or gluten however when we remove wheat dairy gluten foods from a person's diet I still see significant improvement which tells me that there is a sensitivity to these foods the next thing as you remove these inflammatory foods we need to repair the gut lining and uh, the first step is to replenish it with good bacteria probiotics and then there's an amino acid called glutamine which is fantastic to uh, it's like a fuel for the intestinal cells it'll help you repair the gut lining now there's a lot of studies that um, glutamine might not be tolerated well or recommended during cancer because it feeds the cancer cells however there's mixed reviews on that um, and so the research still has to come out on that the next thing to take is digestive enzymes if you're low in digestive enzymes and this will help break down any protein and other foods because remember with leaky gut syndrome your enzymes are not working well as well because um, the line which produces enzymes is damaged also your stomach acid might be low so if you have low enzymes and low stomach acid you're not breaking down protein and other foods properly which means that these foods start rotting in your intestines and when they start rotting putrefaction it's called it causes more intestinal damage and makes your leaky gut syndrome even worse so that's often recommended especially when you have low thyroid function and adrenal fatigue stomach acid is often low and you can test uh, if your stomach acid is low by uh, getting HCL pills stomach acid pills and taking one pill at a time before your meal and then increase the dose and if you have a heartburn while you take these stomach acid pills it means your stomach acid is enough and if you need about two or three and then you start getting heartburn you might have low stomach acid and you can continue taking these pills up to the point where you feel that it's causing heartburn then reduce the amount of pills you're taking by one or two so that there's no discomfort at all so we've repaired the gut lining with glutamine and probiotics and we've removed inflammatory foods and we've also now improved digestive processes by adding enzymes and stomach acid. The next thing we got to do is help repair the gut environment further by adding vitamin D. Most people are low in vitamin D and you can get a lab test to show your levels. Generally the number I like to see is above 30 for vitamin D levels in blood and I recommend about 2000 IU per day with a meal uh, is safely tolerated by people. Above that, if you go like to 5000 a day, some doctors recommend it, but I find it a bit too hard on the liver. Unless you're really low, then you might need to have a high dose in the beginning and then slowly taper down. Vitamin D helps, uh, vitamin D and calcium helps the valve between your low um, your small intestine and your large intestine. It's called the ileocecal valve. It keeps it nice and tight and functioning well. And that helps the environment between your large intestine and small intestine remain separate. Therefore, the bacteria that belong in your large intestine are not affected by the juices and the environment in your small intestine and vice versa for the bacteria in your small intestine not being affected by the juices and environment in your large intestine. The other thing that we got to do here is reduce inflammation and your omega-3s, omega-6s, your fish oils are fantastic for this. Some supplements also have licorice and marshmallow and slippery elm. These are all soothing, soothing nutrients or herbs that create like a mucus layer over your intestinal lining. It helps to soothe inflammation and reduce the damage in there. 
There's certain foods that I use as well, turmeric, in your cooking. Turmeric is fantastic because it detoxifies your liver, it has anti-cancer effects, and it reduces inflammation throughout your body. Okay. The other supplements, I don't often use these, however, it's good to see these in a mix. That They are vitamin A, vitamin B5, selenium, and zinc. They all improve intestinal health as well. So this is one of the supplements I've seen that has a nice mix of different elements which help repair the gut lining. So you'll see glutamine over here, and then you'll see licorice over here. Aloe vera extract is fantastic for the gut. You see slippery elm, mucus, okra extract, right? And then you see quercetin here. So all these are like anti-inflammatory, detoxifying, and um, antihistamine effects. So they really give a chance for your gut to repair itself while you're avoiding the inflammatory foods. And next up, in the next uh, video, we'll be talking about your liver and emotional well-being. So stay tuned and see you soon. Thanks.